say, keep you from being what God wants you to be. But I came to tell somebody that that's about to change. I speak to everything that's been holding you captive, and I command it to latch it up, to latch it up. somebody give God some praise in this place that was all right for me I said but can somebody give God some praise in this place yes I said somebody give God some praise hallelujah hallelujah I said hallelujah <laughs> Glory! Hallelujah! Mm. Woo. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Welcome to Wortham Chapel to where God transformed lives by discipleship through the actions of the Holy Spirit. Somebody give God a praise right there. Amen, amen. I want to challenge the church, amen, because sometimes I want to just get up and say it's time for worship. Now I want to see if y'all are going to respond. Hallelujah. Because should, no, should nobody have to say it's praise the Lord to, to the real saints. I just wonder, does anybody really appreciate him? <laughs> have to say he's good to somebody God has been good to. You already know that God is good, so you ought to praise him for his If I couldn't say a word, I just been too good he's he's been too good hallelujah for me to not praise him hallelujah glory to God let me let me pause for a moment let me pause y'all calm down y'all ready oh now y'all ain't like y'all want to have a church what's wrong with y'all ah, I was proud was shouting on the way to on the way to church this morning hallelujah Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to have your own praise break. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of y'all need to work on some new moves anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. 
let me pause. Let me pause for a moment. I do want to welcome everyone to Wortham Chapel. We thank God for you here virtually, those who are here with us in person. We did send out a message on yesterday to advise and admonish the members of Wortham Chapel and those who plan to visit us that we do require you to wear a mask. But we also, if you've had any symptoms or anyone in your family has had symptoms of COVID-19, to please stay home for the safety of your neighbors, for the safety of the brothers and sisters and members of this church. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I say that with all humility and with all honesty and as a pastor and a protector of the people, yes, the deacons and, and the pastor's office, we have made this declaration to the people because this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to keep in-person and virtual worship going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But we know that if people don't do right, and it causes an outbreak in the church that we're going to have to stop. We won't have a choice. Right. Amen. For the safety of the people. So we're trying to keep this thing going. And so we all have to, and let me just say this. I, I'm, I'm saying this in love. Please go get vaccinated. I, I really, I'm in a place, I really don't care what other folks are saying. Please protect your families. Protect yourself. Please. Please. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with some of the rationale that's coming with some of it. Amen? Because there's enough data now to see that people who have been vaccinated, the benefits of it. Amen? Amen. I've, I've heard all the, I've read the stuff too about infertility. I've read the stuff, amen, about uh, heart disease and I've read all of these hypotheses. None of it's been proven. But one thing is proven. Over 90%, 95% of those that are hospitalized due to the Delta variant were not vaccinated. That's not a hypothesis. That's the truth. That's real. Amen? So I'm just saying protect yourself, protect your families, and protect your neighbors. Amen? I don't care what the political pundits say. I, I really, I'm really not caring about them right now. Because they don't care anything about you if they're not trying to protect you. Amen? And, I, and I'll say this, don't vote for them anymore. If they're not going to protect you or take care of you, I don't care what party they with, you need to get rid of them. Amen? Because folk that don't love you and don't care about you won't do things to protect you. I'm serious when I say that. I'm also, I'm seriously and intimately praying for the people in Afghanistan. Those people are living in horrid conditions and situations, being murdered, killed. We have Christians being attacked and killed. And some of the Christians being attacked and killed, we got to take responsibility before, for because we haven't been living like Christians. Because if we've been taking care of our neighbor and loving our neighbors, then folks wouldn't hate us so bad. I mean that. We call ourselves a Christian nation, but we subside to slavery, bigotry, racism, hatred. None of that is of Christ. So we got to be careful with the labels that we put on people because it's causing real Christians and real people who love God to be in danger. So we're praying for those in Haiti, this, the, the earthquake that happened in Haiti, an already impoverished nation, uh, dealing with destruction and peril to, to heights and lengths that we can't even imagine. Amen? Many of us, we mad because there's a garbage bag over the water fountain for your safety. In Haiti, they wish they just had a water fountain because there's no water in some places. I'm serious, church. And we're also praying for our neighbors in Waverly, Tennessee, Humphreys County, Hickman County, who got over a foot and a half of rain in less than two or three hours and flooded everything. Churches underwater, businesses underwater, houses People, they, I, I, there was on the news, there was 11 people who had already died, and I think they was looking for 19 more. That's, that's just terrible. Those families dealing with that loss this morning. So we're praying for them this morning as well. 
And I said it like this, it could be us. Everything that I just named, it could be us. But because of his grace and his mercy, we are here right now. Amen and amen. We're continually praying for our children and the school systems. We know that many schools got shut down temporarily or went to hybrid and virtual learning processes because of this COVID-19 Delta variant that's so contagious and so uh, rampant right now in the school systems. Some school systems are being honest and dealing with it. Some lying and act like it's not going on, but they're dealing with it. We, listen, it's time out for politics. It's time out for silliness and pettiness. Let us not be selfish. Let us be safe. Amen? Because these folks, these talking head on Fox News, I call them out. These talking heads on CNN and on MSNBC, none of them are coming to the hospital to see you. None of them. These politicians, they are not coming to your funeral. They're not coming to the hospital to see you. They're not going to help you when you're sick and you can't work. They're not coming. So you need to be careful who you're listening to and who you're following. I'm serious when I say that. Take care of your family and protect yourself. Amen. And as your pastor and leader, I want you to know we love you and we care for you. We're still praying for Mother Maudie Terry and her family who has been hit with this virus and been so sick and dealing with a lot of difficulties. We're praying for um, Mother Lewis who has been dealing with different things and, and sickness in her body. Amen. And all of our elders and all of those Amen. Who have uh, comorbidities and or risk to this virus. We're praying that God protect you and keep you in this season. Amen. 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 All right. So as we get ready to move forward in worship, we just want you to amen. Let God have his way in this place, in this time. Amen. And let us not hold back on God. Let us give God everything that we have. Amen. Amen. I said, let us give God everything that we have. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Our scripture today, our scripture today, amen, comes from, amen, 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10, we're going to start at verse 3. My God. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. We're going to start at verse 3 and it read as following. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through, the, through God to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Let us bow. God of the name of Jesus, we call upon you, God, because you are God and beside you there is none other. We need you in this hour to protect your people, to cover your people, to heal your people, to deliver your people, and to set your people free. Free from erroneous mindsets, free from irrelevant spirits, and free from crazy, craziness that's in this world, that's, that's in the populace of this world, but, but you are God and beside you there is none other. And we call upon you, God, because you are able to answer every question. You are able to give a solution to every problem. You are able to heal every sickness. You are able to deliver from every stronghold. You are able to break down every barrier. You are able to open every door. And God, we need you in this hour to move supernaturally for your people, God. Do that which man says cannot be done. Do that which, which science says cannot be done. Do that because you are supernatural. That means you can do more than we could ever imagine. Touch your people, your children in Haiti, God. Touch your people, your children in Afghanistan, God. Touch those in Waverly that were affected by the flood and the 
Hickman County and Humphreys County. And God, touch your people all over this nation and all over this country, God. Touch us, God, because we are divided, God. Lord, we are separated, God. But you said that your prayer was that we would be one as you and the Father are one. And touch your church. Touch your people. Wash us with your blood. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, we ask that you would forgive us of our sins. Sins that are too numerous for us to name. We confess it to you, God. Forgive us, Lord, for those thoughts, for those words, for those deeds and those actions that are contrary to your will and your word. And wipe us and wash us clean right now. Lord, we pray, God, that you would just come in like a flood that you would lift a standard against the flood, that you would hold us in the flood. You told David that the flood shall not overtake him. And God, we know that the water is rising, but we know that with you it cannot overtake us. And we need you, God, to be with us and to be in us. Moreover, work on us, that we will be your vessels, that we will do your will. And we will do your work. It's in Jesus' name I ask these things and I pray. Let the church say amen. 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 We're going to turn it over to our worship team that they may come at this time. Y'all give them a great hand praise as they come. Hallelujah. know we are standing on Jesus promises that he'll take care of us
take care of me. My problems, my situations, my circumstance, no matter what. I feel that thing now. Jesus. Somebody shout like he took care of you. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. That's who you are. Oh my God. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, did he take care of you? Did he, did he take care of you like he said he would? Did he heal you like he said he would? Did he save you like he said he would? Did he? He'll take care of you. Oh, my God. I just wonder if anybody know that God took care of you. If you got to, he took care of me. Shout up. Jesus promised that he'd take care of me. Oh my God. Hallelujah! My God, hallelujah. He said he'd take care of me. He did it. I dare somebody say he did it. He did it. I, I dare you say he did it. He did it. He did it. Woo! Mm. Jesus promised that he'll take care of me. What y'all waiting on? You might as well go on and praise him. Hallelujah. I didn't cause because I couldn't take care of you, but Woo! he took care. Don't miss your shout. That's a good one right there. Watch this. Cause, because if he didn't take care of you, you wouldn't be here right now. The shout is you can look at a miracle because he took care of you because you're still here. God, I know I got to move. I know I got to move. I know I got to move. But sometimes I think we forget who took care of us. The old folks said, but when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done. Somebody say all. See, when you can't, when you, when you really can't reveal to folks what God has done in your life, you just say, and all. I, I can't tell you about what happened that night. I just say, and all. 
I can't tell you about what he did a few years ago, but all that he's done for me, my soul. My soul cries out hallelujah. <laughs> we're gonna stop. We're gonna stop. Uh, I feel like shouting, but I I know I gotta move. I know I gotta move. Thank God for the all. Thank God for the all. Thank God for the all. All to Jesus, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless, blessed be the name of the Lord. I, I promise you, if we responded really to how good God is, we'd have to put up guardrails at the church. Because there's some crazy stuff that God has brought us through. I said some crazy stuff. And he didn't have, what's, what's so wonderful about it that he didn't have to do it. He didn't, even, he didn't have to think about us, but he loved us enough that he, he said, no, don't, don't, don't let that happen to him. Don't let that take them out. He loved us enough that he had mercy on us. I said mercy. You know why I said mercy? Because we knew better, but we didn't do better. We knew we wasn't supposed to go there, but we went anyway. But he kept us. He let us make it back home. Woo. My God. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a hand praise. I got to move. Amen. It's giving time. Amen. It's time to give unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said it's time to give unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many know that God is a rewarder to those that diligently seek him? Amen. So amen, we know that God blesses those who give because God's word requires him to bless those who give. And God is tied to his word. Amen. Amen. For those of you who may be visiting or watching us virtually, you can give. Amen. Electronically through Givelify. It's an app. Just download the app. Look for Wortham Chapel in Alamo, Tennessee. You can give that way. Amen. If you don't have that, you can also give on Cash App. That's dollar sign Wortham Chapel. Amen. You can give electronically that way. If not, our ushers do have envelopes. They can bring you an envelope. Amen. So you can give your gift. Make sure you notate where you want your money to go, where it's meant for, amen, what your gift is meant for, so that our trustees can, can designate that to go to those specific areas, amen? Amen, amen. Are you ready to give? Glory to God. Are you ready to give? Amen, amen, hallelujah. So get your gift in your right hand. Your right hand is your covenant hand. That's whether you're giving electronically or with an envelope, put it in your right hand. Amen, we want to bless it before we take it up. God, in the name of Jesus, bless every seed and every sower in this place. Lord, bless every heart and mind and spirit that is aligned with your word and pour us out a blessing, Lord, that we don't have room enough to receive. Help us to obey your word so that we can be tied to your word. And if you're tied to your word and we do your word, then you're tied to us. And God, we thank you right now for already doing that miraculous work in our lives, whether it be physical, whether it be financial, or whether it be spiritual. And we give you glory for it in advance. It's in the name of Jesus. I do pray and I thank Thank you. Let everybody say amen. Give us some giving music.
Roger Awesome. And we give you the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If you already gave, then you're already blessed. So give God a blessed hand clap of praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for those that gave. Amen. We know that some of you are still giving. We give God glory. Amen. For the gifts that you're giving. And we thank God for the giver giving you the gifts. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we're getting ready to move forward in our service. Amen. We, we talked a little bit at the beginning. We just want you to stay safe, each and every family, no matter where you are. Don't listen to erroneous teaching, erroneous people talking crazy. Amen. We, we thank God for the freedoms that we have in this country, but we also thank God for having good enough sense to protect ourselves. Amen. Amen. So I say protect your families. Amen. Wear a mask, social distance. Amen. Make sure you're sanitizing and be careful in this season. Children. Amen. Make sure you're adhering to all of that as well. I know some of you going back to school and things have been crazy and it's been challenging for parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles, and everybody. Amen. We talked about in Sunday school, grandmama becoming the teacher again and amen and, and having to be the babysitter because of quarantine, things of that nature because somebody got to work. Amen. Amen. And so we're praying for grandmamas and aunties and, and uncles and everyone, granddaddy, amen, everybody who's having to step in in this season, amen. And let us keep praying for each other. We are so divided in this nation that we really need God to do a work on our hearts. I said a work on our heart because if we truly love God, we can love people. And if we love people, then we will treat people with love and respect, amen, amen. And I don't care what party you belong to. I don't really care about either one of them, to be honest with you. I care about God and God's word being real in every one of your lives. Because guess what? Kingdoms will fall and rise, but God is still on the throne. Hallelujah. Amen. I'd rather have favor with God than just favor with man. You remember what they said in Exodus? They said, and another Pharaoh arose who knew not Joseph. That means leadership may change on you, but God is still the same. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to turn it over to our worship team. So good to see. Can you, can you all just clap for yourself because you look so good? Amen. 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 A friend of mine put a joke on, uh, on Facebook. He said, for the folks who look good from the nose up, you're winning right now. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes you just got to laugh to keep from crying. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Folk, hey, they done made, look, they got designer masks and stuff out. Amen. Everybody, everybody being fresh in every capacity of their life. Even with a mask. I'm going to be protected, but I'm going to be cute. Amen. God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> he know I love him. Amen. He's all Detroit, every bit of it. Amen. Glory to God. Thank God for him being here and made it back safe. He's been visiting family in Detroit, so we're so glad he made it back safe. Good to see you, Brother Jerry. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to turn it over to our choir. Amen. We're going to turn it over to our worship team so they can deliver us with a song of worship. After that, we will have the word for today. Somebody give God a great hand. Praise as they come. Hallelujah. this morning and talk to my father this morning. I need to let him know that I'm grateful for everything that he's done for me, everything that he is doing, and everything that he is about to do in my life. I don't know what it is, doesn't matter, 
All I know is, is that he's keeping me. He said in his word that he will never leave me, nor will he forsake me, nor will he leave me comfortless. I lean on him. I depend on him. I stand on his word. He has been faithful. He has been kind. He's been my healer. He's been my everything. Hallelujah. And every time I think about him, I get overwhelmed. So, yeah, I, I am a little jovial. Just you know, <laughs> go with me on that one. The word says rejoice with those when they rejoice. And it also says weep with those when they weep. So whenever you see somebody really getting into it with God, yes, God, get right there with them. Because you never know what they had to go through or what they are about to face. And it's only by their faith that they are connected with the word of God and they are connected to him. So they're trusting and they're believing. And you never know, you could be tied into whatever they have going on. They could be connected to you too. So honestly, just... Just go with me on this one. This is a new one, however, but it's called grateful, and I, I, that, that, just, that just describes all of my sentiments to him. So bear with us, hallelujah. And if you listen to the words of this song, let it just marinate your heart. Let it condition your spirit. Let it open up that door for you to go on and slip your hand up and say, yes, God, I believe you. Yes, God, I'm encouraged. Yes, God, I will still believe you. Hallelujah. And every time I think about it, I go, oh. Faithful, you've been good to me. 
his truth into it to all generations. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, you ought to give God a grateful praise. I say you ought to give God a grateful praise all over this church. Somebody give God a grateful praise. Just be grateful, just... Mm. Can you say me just a little more of that? Just a little more of that, hallelujah. It's a personal decision. I'm grateful. Although everybody else is negative. People talking down, but I'm my heart is grateful. My mind is grateful. My spirit. Let that minister to you. Oh, I hear y'all singing now. I think it's getting to you. Sing it with them. One more time, Teresa. Sing like you're at your house real quick. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my home. I'm, I'm grateful for my job. I'm, I'm grateful for my church. I'm grateful for my sister. I'm, I'm grateful for my brother. I'm grateful for my community. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm... Thank you for my job. Thank you for my car. Thank you for my house. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, choir, so much. Thank you so much. Isn't that something, Terry, that ties into your teaching this morning? He was teaching in Sunday school. He was talking about faith and that we have to be grateful. We have to be thankful. We have to have faith in God. In this season that we're in, the challenges that we're facing, we can't allow it to deter us to negative thoughts and a negative prism of thinking. We have to be grateful for his goodness and his grace. Some of us live in some good lives, y'all. Thank you, Lord. In the midst of this pandemic. Thank you, Lord. And we ought to be thankful to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn it with me to Daniel 6. I got to move. I got to go. I just looked at my time. Hallelujah. Daniel the 6th chapter. My God. We're going to read verse 16 down to 19. This is a very familiar passage of scripture. Thank you, Deuce. Amen. For getting this together in the scripture up there. If you don't have your Bible, just look up. Amen. And the word of the Lord says, so the king gave the command and they brought Daniel and cast him into the lion's den, to the den of lions rather. But the king spoke saying to Daniel, your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Ain't that faith? That's a faith from an unsaved man. Thank be God. Hallelujah. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den. And the king 
sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of his lords that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. He couldn't go back on his word. Verse 18 says, Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting and no musicians was brought before him. Also, his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. Bow with me. God, in the name of Jesus, condition our hearts and our minds to receive the word that you have for us, your people here at Wortham Chapel. We pray that no flesh get any glory, nothing but the name of Jesus. And we'll be careful to always honor and glorify that name that is above every name. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Let everybody say amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I got to move quickly. If I could put a quick tag on this text, I would say, in that hole. In that hole. In that hole. Church, there comes a time in our lives that we find ourselves questioning why we are where we are. We question our status, our situations, our relationships, our careers, our finances, our health, and sometimes we even question our faith. Life has a way of hitting us so hard that you begin to question yourself and everything that's around you. This is personal and it is what I call self-reflection. But I also, but I also question the same things for this nation and even the church. How did we get in this hole that we are in? How did we allow so much division, hate, bigotry, racism, sexism, dehumanization, greed, politics, and the lack of love to take over so much? I ask sometimes, church, how do we get in this hole? It is frustrating to deal with and horrifying to think about how much we have become divided. And anyone who is truly spiritual knows that this is the devil himself, which is named Diablos in Latin, meaning divider, is doing his job. Families are separated due to divorce caused by a fictional mindset of a social media marriage. Y'all not talking to me. Companies are separated by selfish and greedy leadership who devalues their employees to please folks on Wall Street or to fulfill their own greedy lust. Y'all not talking to me this morning. Employees care more about themselves than the overall vision of the company. We got a selfish spirit right now in this land. If we all loved each other, then we would all do better and we would all be better. Churches are divided because instead of following the biblical blueprint of church, we have come to, to set ourselves up with a semi-democratic system in which coups and families run the church instead of God and the leaders he has chosen. Don't get mad at me. Communities are divided because we have perpetrated a language of hate and political highness in order to keep the wealthy wealthy and the poor poor. Y'all not talking to me. We, we don't want to deal with the true atrocities of racism, Jim Crow, and other systems of oppression. Instead, we hide behind a lie and try not to tell the whole truth or instead of wrestling with the fact that some of our forefathers did heinous crimes and hateful things. This nation is divided by political idealism that forces people to choose one side of the other instead of choosing the truth. Y'all not talking to me. We have subsided to a party line idealism rather than to look at an issue with an open mind and an open heart. After all this, I can see why we are in a hole. I know this seems gloom and doom 
to so many and many really don't like all that I just said but I ain't scared of none of y'all I do have to say this after real self reflection and measuring our actions with the word of God we can see why we are personally and nationally in this hole I do want to say this though no matter how deep the hole no matter how complicated the hole and no matter how deadly the hole is God is still able to bring us out there is no hole too deep there is no hole too deadly that God arms cannot reach out and pull us out. Y'all not talking to me. And I don't know who I'm talking to this, this morning, but you need to understand, I don't care where we are currently. If we would turn from our wicked ways and call upon the Lord with a whole heart, he is able to get us out of this hole. Unlike us, Daniel found himself in the lion's den for different reasons. Reasons that were not of his own volition. Daniel had done nothing wrong. All he did was obey the voice of God. The prophet Daniel was an obscure object in a foreign land. He was a Hebrew prophet in a pagan nation, which means he was not welcomed, nor was his thoughts, ideas, or traditions looked upon as anything good or a blessing, but was a threat to the, to the traditions and the ideals of that time. I questioned the text on how and why did Daniel end up in this lion's den, this hole anyway? Many people jump to the decree that the governors and the presidents and the rulers and the political pundits tricked King Darius into, but, but we'll get to all of that a little bit later. I want to talk about Daniel or Belteshazzar as they renamed him in Daniel's reflection that I can see him thinking back on everything that happened before he got placed in the lion's den. First, Daniel was a captive. He did not ask to be there, but because of Israel's disobedient, they were, they were overtaken by the Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar. And then Nebuchadnezzar's eunuchs then took the good looking ones, gifted and the smart ones to work in Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. Y'all not talking to me. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I talk to you a little bit? One could argue that Part of the reason Daniel was in this hole was because he was good looking, gifted, and smart. Y'all not gonna talk to me. Don't miss your shout. See, some of y'all think y'all cute. Don't miss, don't miss your shout right here. Because part of the reason some folks want you in a hole is because they are jealous of what God has given you in your looks, your smarts, and your spiritual gifting. See, Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, they refused their style, their food, and their God in order to stay connected to their traditions and their anointing. Sometimes, sometimes, church, your style, your looks, your swag, and your ability to conversate with God will irritate some folks because they are jealous of what you are and who you are connected to. Y'all not talking to me today. But I want to inform some of you in here right now that you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation, says the Lord. And, and somebody's trying to put you in a hole so that nobody can see who you really are and what God has really anointed you to do but I want you to understand church that no matter where they put you you still are what God anointed you to do the king sent the Hebrew boys to college and they graduated with honors they went to seminary school and graduated magna cum laude so much so that the king elevated them in his kingdom the king himself, the king, not, not one of his associates, not one of his teachers, the king himself interviewed the Hebrew boys and said that there was none like them in his entire nation. 
So I want to inform somebody here this morning that you need to understand the greatness that God has put in you and never settle for anything less than the greatness that God has placed in your life. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, don't hate my greatness. Don't, don't, hate my gra don't hate my good looks. Don't be mad because I'm smart. Don't get upset because I'm anointed. Don't get upset about my greatness. <laughs> Somebody hating on your greatness. Tell them, keep it moving. The second, the second thing, then Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and nobody could interpret it. He had astrological, intelligent interpreters with him. He had priests of his own God with him. He had all these folks around him, but nobody could interpret the dream. But Daniel could hear from God and, and sometimes church people can discount your intelligence. They, they can discount your intelligence by saying things like, well, you know, they gave them good grades. You know, they went to college, they graduated. They made good, well, you know, they made good grades because they felt sorry for them. You know, you know, they only gave them that because they was foreigners and they, and they, and they gave them a chance, you know. And, and sometimes folks will try to deny and or devalue your greatness. But, but when it comes down to the anointing, there's something about the gifting of God that will cause your enemies to even have to recognize that the hand of God is on you so so when Nebuchadnezzar had the dream and, and all the folks who were supposedly smart and gifted and had all of these abilities could not interpret it and then here comes a boy that came from nowhere that there was nothing in this kingdom but he could interpret the dream so let me help you real quick somebody is that when God anoints you he calls you to be what he called you to do and when you do what he said he'll place you before kings and great people watch this all them folks and could nobody interpret it but Daniel interpreted it tell somebody close to you say don't hate on me because I'm anointed see folks will hate on your anointing but they don't want to do what you got in order to receive your anointing y'all not talking to me somebody wants your gift but they don't want to go through what you went through in order to get your, y'all not talking to me. Don't hate on my anointing, don't, don't hate on my anointing. Then Daniel and his friends refused to bow down to the golden image. The Bible says that they got so upset that they had the king to put a decree that said, anybody that don't bow, we're gonna throw them in a the fiery furnace. And because they love God and not the political structure of that day, y'all better listen to me. And because they love God, it sounds familiar, don't it? Folks be bowing down to political figures and people and erecting golden statues and images towards them and then everybody's bowing down to that image. But, but I got news for you. They said we will not bow to anything but our God. Y'all not talk because the prostrate language means you that means you that means you subjected yourself to that which you bow to. And they said, we're not going to subject ourselves to a king who don't know God. We we will only subject ourselves to God. And they said we will not bow. So they said, okay, if you won't bow, we're gonna throw you in the fiery furnace. They said we still won't bow. Then they went and they talked to him and said, now listen, fellas, now listen, if y'all just bow, see, this is how politics do. This is how political figures, they, they're trying to make a deal with you. It's like that, like that no good assistant DA that comes to you and wants you to make a deal for a crime that you ain't even committed. You know, they want to make a deal with you. Let, let, let's make a deal. If you would just bow, everything will be forgiven. Everything will be all right. You can keep living in the palace. You can keep living good. You can keep doing well. If you, all you got to do is just bow. And they said, we will not bow. And then they got really bold. They said, if we perish, let us perish. But it won't be because God is not able. <sighs> Sometimes your faith has to get to a place that no matter what they threaten you with, you said, I won't bow down to anything but God. I won't worship anything but God. I won't put anything above God. I won't, y'all not talking to me in this church. There's some things that you, you got to understand. The Bible says that they heated the fire seven times hotter 
and threw them in the fire. But what messed me up was the Bible says that they walked around in the fire. And the king looked in there, he said, did we not put three in there? Why do I see four in the fire? See, God, somebody asked the question, where is God in all this calamity? Where is God in all of this death? Where is God in all of this sickness? He walking with you in the fire. God has never left us. And even when you get thrown into the fire, he'll still be with you. And the Bible says that the king called for me. Y'all come on out. Since y'all walking around in my fire, they came out. The Bible says they didn't even smell like smoke. They didn't. And I want you to understand something, church. That there's some folks that's mad at you right now because you made it through the fire. Yeah, they thought that you was going to lose your mind in the fire. They thought that you was going to lose everything you had in the fire. They thought you was going to lose yourself in the fire and they mad because you came out of the fire and don't even smell like smoke. I, I, I got news for you. I'm so glad I don't look like what I've been through. Is anybody else in here glad that you made it out the fire but you don't smell like smoke? Glad you made it out that relationship but you don't have to, oh my God, you know I talk with them. Glad that you made it out of that situation, but it didn't take you out. I got news for you. You may go through it, but you won't look like you've been through it. Sometimes your setback is your set up. Y'all not talking to me. Then Daniel, I'm, I'm talking to you. Why is he in the why is he in the pit? Why is he in this why is he in this hole? Why is he in this lion's den? Then, then Daniel again he interprets another dream. And then he then he moved on to a new leader. See, watch this. Sometimes folk lose their anointing when they have a new leader. Y'all not talking to me. If you really anointed to do what you do, you can do it anywhere. Y'all not talking to me. See, some folk good at home, but, but when they leave the house, they're not good. It's, you got to be good on the road just like you are at home. Y'all not talking to me. Some of y'all saved in church, but when you get to work on Monday, somebody, uh-oh. If you really saved and you really got it, you ought to be what you are on Monday, what you are on Sunday. Y'all not talking to me. And Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. and Okay, all right, y'all got it, right? So, so a new king came. After Nebuchadnezzar died, his son Belshazzar took over. And they had a big party. And in the midst of this party, the Bible says that a hand appeared and started writing on the wall. Folks start looking in their glass. They said, am I seeing what I'm really seeing? What's going on here? They said, a hand started writing. And nobody could read it. Watch this. But they forgot that Daniel was still in the kingdom. So they, so they called for all the soothsayers. They called for all the astrologers. They called for all of these people who were supposed to be smart, gifted, and have all these abilities, right? And they looked at the writing and they said, Hmm. Can you read it? I can't. Oh, okay. Can you? Do you know? Do you know what that says? I, I I can't read what's written on the wall. And sometimes God will put something on the wall that only you can read. Y'all not talking to me. And the Bible says that. That Daniel read what was on the wall. This is what's so crazy about it. Is that Daniel is a Hebrew boy in a pagan nation. He'd been taken in captivity, but he's still anointed. And he's anointed, but he has to obey God. And he had to read what was on the wall. But I want to know, are you, are you, are you, ooh, do you have enough faith in God? Do you have enough belief in God to read what's on the wall when it don't sound good to your boss? Will you read what God said even though you know they're not going to agree with what it said? Daniel read, he, he said, I, I hate to tell you, O king, but what's written on the wall says you're going to die. 
and that your kingdom is about to be divided. And I want you to understand, church, that everything that Daniel said, it came to pass. That's why you knew he was a real prophet because when he spoke, it came to pass. And, and if God speaks through you, it will come to pass. But, but I got news for you. There's going to be some folks that's going to hate you because of what God said to you. Oh, y'all not talking to me. Because when you got to tell folks the truth, some people don't want to hear what God really has to say. Everybody want to hear the voice of God, but you really don't want to know what God says when it's not in your favor. So I can see in my spiritual eyes, they said, you know what? We got to get rid of Daniel because he's a problem. He interpreted dreams. We put his boys in the fire that didn't burn. He can read the writing on the wall. He making all of us look bad. And church, sometimes God will gift you to a place to where you make other folk look bad and you ain't really trying to do it. Y'all not talking to me. Uh, I didn't get no amens on that. You, you will do a, so good a job that folk on the job mad at you because you did a good job and all you was doing was doing what you was asked to do. And, and I don't care if they do hate on you. You keep doing what God told you to. But when God verifies you, he will verify you in front of your enemies. Y'all not talking. I'm getting ready to close, church. And, and, and Daniel, Daniel, Daniel was hated, church, because of his good looks and his intelligence. Y'all remember what I said in the beginning, right? Daniel was fine. He was good looking. He had good hair. Y'all know, y'all know how y'all say that. They had good hair. Yeah. For, you, for those that like, he was light skinned. He was, he was, he was, he was dark skinned. The black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. He, y'all stop. Y'all don't, don't be clapping. Don't, y'all showing y'all stuff. Don't be. <laughs> he was fine and, and he had spiritual gifts. He was fine and he was spiritual. He had it going on, brother. He had it going on, brother Corey. He was anointed and good looking. Everybody wanted him. Brother Giannis, they all wanted him. They did. Don't hold his hand too tight, says Gina. Ain't nobody going to bother Brother Giannis. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> he had spiritual gifts. He could interpret dreams. He could, he could read writings that nobody else could read. He was, he was also feared because when they tried to kill him and his boys, the fire wouldn't even kill them. And, and, and I'm getting ready to close, church, but as we approach our text today, Daniel is under new leadership again with King Darius. And I, and I need to say this, church, but, 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 but if you're truly anointed, your anointing will transfer to wherever God places you. You're not talking to me. And now the people, they did not like Daniel because he was a foreigner. He was, he was an outsider. He was a nobody in that land. He was also smart and good looking and he had all these spiritual gifts. But, but I want you to know what really drove them crazy was Daniel had a prayer life. Y'all not talking to me. Ah, so they tricked the king. They tricked the king. The new king and into making a decree they, they played upon his pride and said that nobody's going to pray for 30 days they're only going to bow down to you they're only going to observe you because you are our new and great leader and church I want you to know that there's some folks on your job there's some folks in your church there's even some folks in your family that don't like you because of your prayer life they don't like the fact that you can get a hold of heaven they don't like the fact that you can get in contact with God. They don't, they don't like the fact that, that if it's raining, you can pray and then it'll stop raining. They don't like the fact that it's not raining, you can pray and it's stop. Y'all not talking to me. But when you can get a prayer through, prayer will change things. But, but the thing is, your haters, your enemies, and everybody's going to be hating on you because of your prayer life. So, so they had the king to make a degree and, and it said nobody can pray, nobody can do any of this stuff for 30 days and and soon as they made the decree here comes Daniel because he believed in an almighty God the Bible says he went up to his room opened up his window and started praying like he always did 
They said he prayed three times a day. He prayed in the morning. He prayed at noonday. Then he prayed at night. Somebody said you need to pray three times too. But the Bible says after the decree he kept on praying and his haters they was looking for him because you got to know that your haters are watching you because they want to see how you respond to the situation and Daniel kept on praying they said oh king your servant your boy Daniel is praying in the window now king your decree says that nobody could pray that nobody could call on anything except for your leadership did you not say that king and the bible says that king darius looked at all of his leaders he said yes i said that and they said well you got to go do something about daniel because he's not following your rule and sometimes your haters are trying to get to the folks that's blessing you because they jealous of your connection so King Darius couldn't go back on his word, church. Can I take you to the word? He said, he said, you can't go back on your word. He said, so, so go get Daniel. And we're going to throw him in the lion's den. But the Bible says that when they got Daniel and they threw him in the lion's den, they said, the king said, oh, Daniel, your God and who you pray to uh, will deliver you. Uh, Y'all didn't hear that church. Uh, God will cause folks that don't believe in your God uh, to, to give you some faith uh, when you going through your storm. Uh, can I talk to anybody uh, that's been in the pit, uh, that's been in the lion's den, uh, and the Bible says uh, that the king uh, threw Daniel in the lion's den. But thanks be to God that God intervened. He gave all the lions COVID-19. Y'all not gonna talk to me. All the lions got sick. They must have had diarrhea. They must have had high fever. They must have had cough. They must have lost their taste or their smell. Y'all not shout with me. And the same devil that threw you in the pit, that thought the lions were gonna eat you up. God gonna cause them to lose their taste. They gonna lose their smell. They gonna lose their sensibilities because we serve a God that if he got to, he'll get down in the hole with you. If he need to, he'll send somebody in the hole with you. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but thanks be to God that he don't just show up in the palace, but he'll show up in the pit. He'll show up in the hole. He'll show up when the devil got you surrounded. He'll show up when your enemies hate on you. He'll show up when your family turn their back on you. Thanks be to God. But in that whole church, God delivered Daniel. In that whole church, God set him free. In that whole church, God showed he is strong and mighty. In that whole church, God showed he can control your enemies. In that whole church, God's got a healing in the hole. God's got a blessing in the hole. God's got prosperity in the hole. Somebody say, in that hole, God is about to do something in this nation, in this church, in this country, in the hole that we're in. Thanks be to God that he'll show up in that hole. He'll show up in that hole. That he'll bless you in that hole. That he'll birth you in that hole. Because somebody don't know. 
the God that you serve until they put you in the lion's den and watch all the lions get sick. Y'all not talking to me. He'll take what's dangerous and make it docile. He'll take what'll kill you and cause it to keep you warm at night. He'll take folks that's trying to take you out and he'll cause them to lift you up. And the Bible says that the king couldn't sleep, that he was upset. But early in the morning, he went down to the lion's den. Somebody said early in the morning. Your blessing about to come in the morning. Your deliverance about to come in the morning. Your breakthrough is about to come in the morning. Somebody say in the morning. In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. He looked down in the hole. He saw Daniel. He was taking a nap. In the middle of a bunch of lions. Watch this church. You have no idea what God is about to do in this hole. It was supposed to kill you, but it's about to bless you. <laughs> Watch this church, because when it didn't kill them, watch this, the king elevated them. See, you want God to turn it around, but wait till God come in the hole and shut up everything that's trying to eat you and shut up everything that's trying to block you and open every door that's trying to keep you out and knock down every wall that's trying to stop you. Watch what he do in the hole. Your promotion's in the hole. Your breakthrough, your blessing, everything is in the hole. And I'm not, and I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm done. I'm not trying to be mean, but I got to say this. And those that threw him in the hole, watch this. This is how you know your anointing really works. When they threw him in the hole, the lions couldn't eat. They had COVID-19. They had the Delta variant. They were sick as a dog. They couldn't do nothing. They said, he over there, but I ain't fooling with him, Lord Jesus. My head hurting so bad, I ain't gonna fool with him today. My stomach is tore up. <laughs> Y'all think I'm playing. Y'all think I'm, <laughs> watch it. But, but then the Bible says that after, after, after the God saved Daniel, he sent the angel, shut the lion's mouth, watch this. Then the Bible says that King Darius took all those who lied and conspired against Daniel and he threw them in the hole. And the Bible says they ate them all up. The hole that they threw you in blessed you, but the same hole took them out. Y'all not talking to me. That's the God we serve. Watch this. But you won't realize that until you're in that hole. We in a hole right now. This nation is in a hole. Our families are in a hole. Some of our relationships are in a hole. But watch what God does in the hole. He's about to verify you in the hole. Give God some praise right there. I'm done. I went way over my time, but somebody needed that word. I had to get that word out because it's in the hole where God is about to do miracles and do the miraculous. But today, if you're in the hole, and you hadn't even noticed that you're in a hole. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor 
and a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, won't you come right now? Come right now while the blood is running warm in your veins. Jesus, Hallelujah. Everything. Won't you come? If you're backslider, I got to be quick today. Won't you come? Send us a message virtually. We'll be glad to reach out to you. Are you here? Won't you come? I'll spend my always with you. Hallelujah. Jesus, my if you're looking for a church home, won't you come and join a bunch of imperfect people serving and worshiping a perfect God right here at Wortham Chapel? Are you here? Hallelujah. Every time you brought me through, I promise. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go home. Stand up, stand up. Jesus, you're my everything. The cross you did that just for me. Hallelujah. For every time you brought me through, I promise you, I'll spend my always with you. Hallelujah. Will you bow with me? God, in the name of Jesus, touch us in the hole that we're in in this nation, in this country, where we're divided, where we're separated. God, bring us together in love and peace and in harmony. But don't bring us together in fakeness. Bring us together in realness. That we deal with the atrocities and the things that have happened. Lord, we thank you for our haters. We thank you for those that discourage us and talk negatively about us because we know that you'll use them to validate us. And God, I pray that you would bless your people with the blessing that they stand in the need of. It is you who get all the glory. It is you who get all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name that I ask these things. Let the church say amen, amen, amen and amen. We're going to dismiss one section at a time. Amen. Please wait on the ushers, amen. For every time you brought me through, I promise you, I'll spend my always with you. Jesus, you're my everything. Since that day, your name for every time you brought me through I promise you I'll spend my always with you Jesus my whole life has changed since that day I cried your name I promise you, I'll spend my always with you. Jesus, you're my everything. Jesus, you're my everything. Jesus, you're